Hi everyone, a very good morning to all of you. I welcome you all to another session of RBI 247, wherein we discuss finance current affairs. So RBI ki notification a chuki hai. The exam is going to be on 9th July. I hope you all are preparing for your exam and give as many mocks as you can, practice as much as you can so that you can clear your exam this year itself. Do not waste any time now. Ab notification ki jo hum wait karte the ki notification aayega, tab padna shuru karenge ya seriously padna shuru karenge. So time has come to study very seriously now. Okay, let's start with today's session. Aaj jo hum teen topics padne wale hain. The first one is about counter cyclical capital buffer. So I am sure you all have heard of this name. What is counter cyclical capital buffer? Why is it maintained? How is it maintained? This we are going to study now. So the question of how is going to be catered here. How is it maintained? What makes banks decide to maintain a counter cyclical capital buffer? The second news is about SEBI. SEBI has changed, bring a change in its rules, uh, especially related to brokers. So what used to happen was brokers participation in bank guarantee. What brokers used to do is they used to get a bank guarantee. Now SEBI has put a ban on that. We'll understand this in very detail. The third one is about new remittance rule. So we all know about the liberalized remittance scheme of RBI. Ye bhi hum ek bari detail mein dekhenge. What is this LRS liberalized remittance scheme and what are the new rules in this scheme? We'll also have a look at that. Okay. So the first one is about counter cyclical capital buffer. Okay, 2008 ki baat hai, after the Lehman Brothers crisis, after the Lehman Brothers crisis, a lot of banks, a lot of companies collapsed after this crisis, the global financial crisis as we call it in 2008. After this, it was a concern of various countries you know, everybody in the world was concerned about the banking sector because uh, anything in the banking sector can have a ripple effect in various other economies, in various other sectors as well. And it directly affects the investors who have invested their money in one form or another or another in the banks, right? So, the biggest concern the banking sector ki safety, security and resilience kaise hogi banking sector. Ki. So, basal reforms came up. Basel 1, 2, 3, three type ke basal reforms humne abhi tak padhe hai. Under which it was decided that capital will be maintained by banks on the basis of their risk weighted assets. And these capital should be utilized in any scenario or in any case where credit is not there or in any bank run situation or any situation which is unfortunate in the you know going on business of the banking sector, right? So, Basel mein humne teen type ke pillars padhe the. The first one is about capital requirement, then market discipline, capital requirement and statutory rules, statutory reserves, right? <clears throat> now, then market capital requirement mein humne padha tha. Going forward, capital requirement kaise maintained hogi? Based on the risk weighted assets. And this was in tier 1. Tier 2, capital in the form of Tier 1, which we have also detail in detail, forms kis type ke capital is maintained in capital uh, Tier 1. For example, non-convertible preference shares, what kind of preference shares or common equity capital, right? These are in t uh, Tier 1. Then what is in Tier 2? Apart from that, we have CCB, capital conservation buffer. So in case of any event or any scenario which is unforeseen, or a scenario which is not expected. Us scenario may capital conservation buffer utilize kara jata hai. And then we have one more buffer which is counter cyclical capital buffer. Counter cyclical capital buffer. So tier 1 was supposed to be maintained at 7%, tier 2 at 2%, counter cyclical capital buffer 2.5%, and sorry, capital conservation buffer at 2.5%, and counter cyclical capital buffer at 0 to 2.5%. 0 to 2.5%. ठीक है. अब इतना हम सबको पता है. Now what is this counter cyclical capital buffer and why is this in news? Why are we studying about it? Now, counter cyclical capital buffer नाम से ही पता चल रहा है. When the cycle, when the cycle of business, see, we know that there is a boom period and we know that there is a recession period, right? There are going to be times when credit appreciation is going to be there, right? Credit will be more in the economy. Liquidity will be more in the economy. Demand of credit will be there a lot. But there is going to be a situation when credit 
डिमांड uh, बहुत ज्यादा कम हो जाएगी राइट right? डिपॉजिट्स भी प्रॉबेबली बहुत ज्यादा कम हो सकते हैं सो अ काउंटर साइक्लिकल बफर इज मेंटेन्ड एट अ टाइम व्हिच इज अ गुड टाइम फॉर द बैंकिंग सेक्टर सो अ बफर इज मेंटेन्ड इन अ गुड टाइम व्हिच कैन बी यूटिलाइज्ड एट अ बैड टाइम और एन अनफोरसीन सिचुएशन और व्हेन द साइकिल इज नॉट इन बूम और इट इज इन रिसेशन राइट जब साइकिल बूम में नहीं है it is in recession period when credit growth is not taking place in the banking sector tab ye capital utilize kari ja sakti hai right so we know about ye humne pad liya samajh liya what happened after the global financial crisis why was basel committee formed it was formed so that capital ki requirement of banks ko pata lag sake what is the capital that they have to maintain with themselves right which can be used in an unforeseen situation in case there are npas tab bhi utilize kar sakte hain banks in capital ko based on what are their risk weighted assets okay now ab ye hum news mein isliye pad rahe hain because rbi has given on its website that rbi is currently not going to activate the counter cyclical capital buffer so it is not necessary it is decided that it is not necessary currently to activate this counter cyclical capital buffer at this point in time now ab dekhte hain counter cyclical capital buffer kaise maintain kara jata hai how do banks realize or understand that it is the time to you know maintain this buffer and to utilize this buffer right ab sabse pehle there was an internal working group created by rbi under the chairmanship of b mahapatra under the chairmanship of shri b mahapatra which gave a report a final report on implementation of counter cyclical capital buffer in july 2014 right so this is important piece of information jo hame pata honi chahiye related to counter cyclical capital buffer when was the report given who was the chairman of the committee who submitted this report and what does this report talk about so ye kuch cheeze now aim of counter cyclical buffer aim why is it maintained ye humne समझा है देर आर टू रीजन और टू फोल्ड रीजन वाई काउंटर साइक्लिकल कैपिटल बफर इज मेंटेन सबसे पहला इज ड्यूरिंग गुड टाइम्स बैंक हैव टू मेंटेन अ बफर अ बफर ऑफ कैपिटल ड्यूरिंग गुड टाइम्स बिकॉज अगर गुड टाइम चल रहा है बैंक विल हैव इनफ लिक्विडिटी विद दम सेल्स इनफ कैपिटल और दे केन रेज कैपिटल विच इज इक्विटी कैपिटल कॉमन इक्विटी टीयर वन इक्विटी कैपिटल दे केन रेज दिस कैपिटल and use it as a buffer why buffer so that this capital can be utilized or converted into utilized assets utilizable assets in case of bad times right in case agar dobara global financial crisis jaisi koi situation aati hai so bank should have a counter cyclical capital buffer maintained with them so this was the first reason to maintain or to build up a buffer of capital in good times which which can be utilized in bad times maintain the flow of credit to the real sector in difficult times jab credit creation kam ho rahi hai credit ki growth nahi ho rahi recession period chal raha hai tab is capital ko utilize kar sakte hain and the second is to avoid banks from giving credit to restricting from indiscriminate lending right a lot of times what happens is banks when there is a boom period going on banks tend to give a lot of credit and what happens is when there is indiscriminate lending in the economy when credits are given because banks assume ki jitna hum credit de rahe hain bahut zyada acha hai because on that they will be earning interest right so but what happens is in this kind of a situation when indiscriminate lending takes place a lot of these loans can actually tend to become npas non performing assets going forward this has happened in the past we have seen it in newspapers and you know in the news why when it has happened and what happened when banks were indiscriminately lending especially during 2008 after even after it also banks were lending indiscriminately and without making proper buffers or maintaining any capital in case npas turn ho jate hain unke credit loan so banks did not appropriate for such a situation so to avoid any such situation of indiscriminate lending and to maintain a buffer in good times which can be utilized in difficult times this is the reason why counter cyclical capital buffer is maintained now we know about capital conservation buffer ccb capital conservation buffer jo banks ko mandatorily prepare karna padta hai or have to maintain it so capital conservation buffer is 2.5% then there is a counter cyclical capital buffer which is maintained 
up to 0 to 2.5 percent of their risk weighted asset. It can vary from 0 to 2.5 percent of the total risk weighted asset. Right? Now, when do you start to tell and maintain it? So, it is a pre-announced procedure and the lead time, the time between when it is probably going to be utilized is four quarters. So, pre-announced four quarters before the actual utilization of this buffer. Right? So, the CC's, the counter-cyclical capital buffer decision would normally be pre-announced. It will be on a pre-announced basis with the lead time or the buffer time, which is the actual buffer time, hai, it is going to be four quarters. However, if there is a situation that in a shorter time period, pe isko utilize karna hai, that can also be done. And if pre-announcement has to be made in a shorter span of time, then also it can be done. But usually, the pre-announcement period is taken with the buffer or the lead time of four quarters. Okay. Now, ye samaj liya ki utilize, uh, what is the reason and what is the percentage and also when it is pre-announced, when it is announced. Now, on what basis it is created? So, the basic, the basis on which the cap, uh, the creation or the decision of this capital uh, counter-cyclical capital buffer is maintained on the basis of credit to GDP ratio. Credit to GDP ratio gap. Credit to GDP gap. Ab ye hota kya hai? What is this? credit to GDP gap. So, a gap between the credit to GDP ratio and the trend of credit to GDP ratio. So, a trend is analyzed. Kya credit to GDP ratio ka trend raha hai? A trend that is over a period of time, over a particular period of time, kya credit to GDP ratio raha hai? That is the trend. The trend of this ratio and the current ratio. If there is a gap and a huge gap between this, between the two ratios, then on certain basis, this counter cyclical capital buffer is supposed to be maintained. Why? Because banks now have realized that there is a gap between what has been the trend because banks are, you know, not able to match up with the trend of credit to GDP ratio. Kitna GDP hai? And on the basis of that, kya credit de rahe hai? Kya credit growth hai economy mein? Kitna credit banks de pa rahe hai? On the basis of GDP growth. Okay, so this, if there is a huge gap between the normal trend and the credit to GDP ratio, then this is utilized, then this is maintained. It is decided that counter cyclical capital buffer ko activate karna padega or maintain karna padega. Okay, <coughs> now on what basis? Ab, you have to realize this credit to GDP gap is the main indicator. However, it is not the sole indicator. Iske ilawa bhi kuch indicators hai. For example, industrial outlook. In incremental credit to deposit ratio, incremental credit to deposit ratio. These are certain parameters on which CCYB, that is counter cyclical capital buffer, can be maintained. It is also known as CCCB. Pehle ye isko aise bolte the. Counter cyclical capital buffer. Now it is known as CCYB, counter cyclical capital buffer. Okay. Now. <coughs> Now, there are certain other parameters that can be used. For example, credit to deposit ratio. Other than that, industry outlook assessment index. This is released by RBI. This may RBI qualitatively, qualitative assessment karta hai of various manufacturing sector businesses which are engaged in the manufacturing sector. What is their assessment of the market? How are they affected by the market? Or how are they reacting to the current situation in the market? Right. So, industrial outlook assessment index and interest coverage ratio. Interest coverage ratio. Are banks or any company interest coverage ratio ka kya matlab hai? The, in this case, we are talking about banks. Are banks able to generate enough income that they can cover or pay back their interest on various debt instruments that they have? So, interest obligations jo hai unki, are they able to cover that with their income? Okay. Are they able to cover that with their income? Okay. Now, certain while taking a decision on CCYB, these are certain parameters that are taken into uh, consideration for the bank or, you know, uh, con taken into consideration by the bank before taking a decision, final decision on counter cyclical capital buffer. Right? <coughs> now, now, we will have a look at that. 
सबसे पहले देर इज अ लोएस्ट थ्रेश होल्ड एंड देर इज एन अपर थ्रेश होल्ड ऑफ दिस गैप वी टॉक अबाउट क्रेडिट टू जी डी पी गैप क्रेडिट टू जी डी पी गैप वी टॉक अबाउट अ गैप नाउ इफ दिस गैप इज एट द लोएस्ट इफ दिस गैप इज लो दैट इज थ्री परसेंट का थ्री परसेंटेज पॉइंट का ये गैप है देन द सी सी वाई बी कैपिटल कंजर्वेशन काउंटर साइक्लिकल कैपिटल बफर विल बी लो वेरी लो एंड इन केस दिस क्रेडिट टू जी डी पी का गैप इज फिफ्टीन परसेंट देन इट विल बी द अपर थ्रेश होल्ड ऑफ द काउंटर साइक्लिकल कैपिटल बफर इट विल बी द अपर थ्रेश होल्ड ऑफ द काउंटर साइक्लिकल कैपिटल बफर lower threshold upper threshold okay now in in the lower threshold in the lower threshold of the credit to gdp gap where the ccyb is actually activated that is the lower threshold is there of the cccb it shall be set at 3 percentage point that is when the credit to gdp ratio is 3 percentage points that is when we start having the ccyb that is counter cyclical capital buffer now in case this gap is as much as 15 percentage points then it reaches the maximum that is the counter cyclical capital buffer it reaches the maximum maximum of 2.5% maximum of 2.5% upper threshold pe reach ho jayega and here it is maintained at minimum now ab iske beech ka jo difference hota hai on the basis of the difference that is there this capital buffer that is supposed to be maintained it gradually increases based on the difference between the credit to gdp ratio gap okay now in between 3 to 15 percentage points of the credit to gdp gap the cccb shall increase gradually from 0 to 2.5% of the requested asset of the banks but the rate of increase would be different based on what is the level or the position of This credit to GDP ratio. तो जब credit to GDP ratio minimum पे था credit to GDP का जो gap है P to G gap I am writing it. Credit to GDP का gap is minimum. That is थ्री percent. Then the CCYB is at the lower threshold LT. And when the credit to GDP gap is फिफ्टीन basis point, then the CCYB is at the upper threshold. कम है दिस क्रेडिट टू जी डी पी गैप If it is below three percentage point, then CCCB is not required to be maintained by banks. Okay, अब जो parameters uh, use करे गए थे to decide whether we have to maintain the CCYB or not, which whatever parameters were utilized while making a decision at uh, you know creating the buffer, the same parameters are utilized for deciding when to release the buffer or how to utilize the buffer. The only difference here will be that the RBI will be taken into consideration when deciding on the release of the buffer. So, when activate kara gaya hai, ya jab decide kara gaya hai, buffer is to be maintained or buffer calculate kara ja raha hai, maintain kara ja raha hai. Then, the parameters that were utilized, all the the same set of indicators are now going to be utilized when it is going to be released. When jab ap is buffer ko utilize kar rahe. the same set of indicators are going to be used however but the use of the same by the banks will need to be decided only after discussions with the rbi so rbi will be involved in deciding how to utilize it when to utilize it or how to release this buffer again in the economy okay now we are done with this counter cyclical capital buffer kuch bahut important points hai isse jo hame yaad karne hai kis basis pe ye decide hota hai and just remember currently rbi deciding that it is not going to be activated right now now let's come to the second news the second one is about sebi sebi has brought out since last one year sebi is continuously bringing new various rules for example upi mechanism pe uh, asba mechanism jo sebi lai thi it will be now just like upi ye this also we have 
discussed it right uh, pehle bahut pehle so this was also for to bring transparency between investor and its broker right so broker ka jo role hai in the economy especially with their clients it is supposed to be reduced and broker ki leverage na rahe that was also reduced right so ab ye jo new rule hai it is on again on brokers their utilization of clients funds what used to do what the brokers used to do was ki so broker kya karte the they used to utilize the clients fund to leverage or to get a bank guarantee bank guarantee lene ke liye client ke fund ko utilize karte the so let's suppose you are a client you have a certain amount of money in your account right you have a certain amount of money in your account let's say rupees 100 you are the client of a broker now what this broker will do see already we as investors anybody they borrow and lend to the broker that is the job sometimes brokers have certain securities and investors borrow these securities and sell it or and return it again to the investor they also borrow money from the book broker at a lot of times that also happens and broker gets certain interest राइट सो ये लीवरेजिंग पोजिशन होती है बोरोइंग लेंडिंग होती है विद द ब्रोकर एंड इट्स क्लाइंट दैट इज द इक्वेशन दैट इज देयर ऑफ द विद द ब्रोकर एंड इट्स क्लाइंट राइट सो लेंडिंग बोरोइंग अभी तक होती है बट व्हाट आल्सो यूज्ड टू हैपन वाज द ब्रोकर यूज्ड टू यूटिलाइज द क्लाइंट्स फंड्स सो इफ यू हैव अ सर्टेन अमाउंट ऑफ मनी इन योर अकाउंट ब्रोकर यूज्ड टू प्रोबेब्ली बोरो इट एंड गेट एन एफडी डन अ फिक्स्ड डिपॉजिट इस अमाउंट का करा लिया एंड अब इस अमाउंट पे बैंक गारंटी ले ली या बैंक से लोन ले लिया सो अब बैंक गारंटी लेके उन्होंने अपना अकाउंट को लीवरेज कर लिया वेन वी टॉक अबाउट लीवरेज वी मीन दैट इट इज अडिशनल मनी दैट वी हैव टेकन फ्रॉम समवेयर सो ब्रोकर यूज टू गेट अडिशनल मनी सो अब इनके पास टू हंड्रेड रुपीज आ गए एंड दे कैन यूटिलाइज दिस टू हंड्रेड अमाउंट यूजिंग द क्लाइंट फंड दे टुक अ बैंक गारंटी Now SEBI has decided to put a stop on this practice of getting bank guarantee using the client fund. ठीक है? Now SEBI has put a ban on it, and from first May, this is going to be effective. Let us have a look. SEBI has put a stop to the practice of brokers creating bank guarantees using client fund. This is a part of series of steps which the SEBI has taken to safeguard the client's fund and securities from misuse by the brokers. now what used to happen was why this was done was to create volume or to have leverage and liquidity in the economy agar aapke paas paisa nahi hai and if you get money from outside and you are buying securities in the market they, it creates a liquid position in the market right volume of securities that are traded it also increases so sabse pehla leverage hota hai that is you get a leverage or you get liquidity so if i am the broker and i do not have that money i do not have that rupee I do not have hundred rupees. I can borrow hundred rupee from the client's fund, or I can use this client fund and get bank guarantee. And now I might have two hundred rupees. So this has created liquidity. Using this money, the broker can you know sell or purchase of stocks. So stock market में trading कर सकते हैं using this money which they did not have. So this has increased liquidity. which will also increase the volume of tradable securities volume of tradable securities bhi increase ho jayegi but it could also create a black swan event what is a black swan event see if this was happening and this was happening with a huge amount of money abhi to ye we are just taking an example of a 100 rupee and isme bank guarantee 200 rupee ki utha li but in case it happens with a huge amount of money in that situation if any miss happening happens with the broker or when you know when the market is leveraged there is a lot of risk because wo aapka paisa nahi hai so any fluctuation in the market any fluctuation in the price and the broker or even somebody who whoever is leveraged or whoever has you know taken loan to trade if a, an uncertain situation happens and if you do not get the money from selling that stock or from trading then it creates a debt circle and it creates an illiquid position at the same time risk इन द सिक्योरिटीज मार्केट ठीक है तो रिस्क क्रिएशन होता था इसकी वजह से राइट एंड इट कैन हैव अ ब्लैक स्वॉन इवेंट वॉट इज अ ब्लैक स्वॉन इवेंट ब्लैक स्वॉन इवेंट इज एनी इवेंट विच इज नॉट एक्सपेक्टेड और अनएक्सपेक्टेड इवेंट विच इज स्पेशली रिलेटेड टू अ स्टॉक मार्केट तो इट इज अ टर्म यूज इन स्टॉक मार्केट 
wherein an unexpected event takes place which might have a ripple effect in other sectors as well ya puri economy pura stock market mein hi ripple effect aa sakta hai of that one particular event so this could result in various kind of risk at the same time create a black swan event because market bahut zyada leveraged hai market bahut zyada बोरोइंग्स पे भी चल रही है एट द सेम टाइम लिक्विडिटी इंक्रीज हो गई है बट सिक्योरिटी इज नॉट इंक्रीज अलोंग विद लिक्विडिटी नाउ नाउ द स्टॉक एक्सचेंज द स्टॉक एक्सचेंजेस लाइक एन एस सी बी एस सी स्टॉक एक्सचेंजेस अलोंग विद क्लियरिंग कॉर्पोरेशन हु आर क्लियरिंग द ट्रांजेक्शन दे हैव बिन आस्ट बाय द सेबी टू मॉनिटर दिस एंटायर प्रोसेस एंड अपडेट टू द सेबी ऑन अ फोर्थ नाइट बेसिस ऑन द टोटल बैंक गारंटीज that are made using client's fund so now these stock exchanges and clearing corporations will be monitoring this entire process and will be reporting to the sebi okay these practices will be barred from 1st may and all existing agar koi already bank guarantees existing hai stock market mein these will end or terminate from september 30 now they can utilize their own funds to get bank guarantees but not client's fund to get bank guarantee okay now what is this new remittance rule theek hai we all know about liberalized remittance scheme so pehle kya hota tha when anybody wanted to remit their money abroad or utilize foreign exchange dollars mein agar aapko bahar ya to paisa bhejna hai kisi ko or you want to give a donation or a gift to anybody education loan dena hai kisi ko or even invest outside a lot of procedures were there it was a very cumbersome process it was not an easy process so it was decided that remittance mechanism ko liberalize kara jaye when we are talking about liberalizing the word liberalizing means having liberal policies having policies which are easy easy to adopt and the process should not be cumbersome anymore the process should not be difficult to so rules ko ease karna to bring an ease in the rules so liberalized remittance scheme it was for any individual any resident indian who want to remit money abroad for any purpose for any purpose like education ke liye aapne kisi aur ko dena hai you are sending it to a relative or even if you are investing it outside that is remittance right so these process should be liberalized the process should be liberalized that is by lrs liberalized remittance scheme ab jab ye start hui thi the limit was 25000 dollars the limit was 25000 dollars 2004 mein this was the limit this was the amount of money that anybody could remit outside theek hai 25000 dollars but now it has been changed to 250000 dollars in a financial year so ab you can remit up to 250000 dollars in a financial year अब रॉड अब बाहर पैसा भेज सकते हैं यूटिलाइज कर सकते हैं इन डॉलर्स ओके फ्रीली रेमिट अप टू यूएसडी टू लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड पर फाइनेंशियल ईयर फॉर एनी परमिसेबल करंट कैपिटल अकाउंट ट्रांजैक्शन और अ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ बोथ नाउ देर आर सर्टेन पर्पस जिसके लिए आप रेमिट नहीं कर सकते एनी परचेज ऑफ लॉटरी टिकट और मैगजीन कुछ ऐसी अनऑथराइज मैगजीन या कुछ ऐसा अनऑथराइज काम है जो प्रोहिबिट करा गया है अंडर द फेमा रेगुलेशन अंडर द फेमा एक्ट इफ देर इज एनी प्रोहिबिटेड एक्टिविटी फॉर विच यू कैनोट गेट फॉरन एक्सचेंज एट द सेम टाइम यू कैनोट रेमिट फॉरन एक्सचेंज सो इफ एनी एक्टिविटी इज देयर गिवन देयर इन द फेमा एक्ट यू कैनोट यूज दैट मनी फॉर सेंडिंग रेमिटेंस और फॉर यूटिलाइजिंग इट फॉर रेमिटेंस अंडर द एल आर एस स्कीम so uske liye remittance cannot be done for any prohibited activity for example lottery or for example in case of any magazines or unauthorized magazines now <clears throat> to abhi tak kya hota tha so the investors who had sent money outside for any purpose and they are not utilizing this money or they have sent money outside for investment or investment mein jo return aaya hai they are not utilizing that return they are not reinvesting it and this amount is just there in their offshore account in any form they are not utilizing it in any way now rbi has put a restriction that up to 180 days 180 days tak agar aapka koi aisa paisa hai outside if you have taken any money and remitted it out outside and you are not utilizing it in any way if you are not investing it in any way 
and not utilizing it, then you have to either send it to the authorized dealer. Then you have to either send it to the authorized dealer or repatriate it back or invest it. Ya to aap kahi invest karo within 180 days. If there is any unutilized, unspent foreign in, uh, exchange money or either it is to be reinvested ya to aap usko reinvest karo reinvest in you know any investment or you have to give it back to the authorized dealer within 180 days now this is the new rule that has come up by rbi rbi has brought out this rule so according to the new rule if you have any unused foreign exchange stashed abroad you must return it with a certain time frame the new rule restrains investors from keeping money Beyond six months in offshore bank accounts, the rule requires them to invest, invest the unused amount. If you invest it, that also has to be given somewhere. Mostly, the rules and regulations hote hai, which involves foreign exchange. The reason RBI does this is to stop money laundering procedure. So, if you don't invest it, you don't use it as an authorized dealer, you don't use it as an authorized dealer, you don't use it as an authorized dealer, and it is just parked there in an account, in an offshore account. It can be used for money laundering. Now, in this case, if any amount is there outside, in, you know, in any offshore account, which is not being utilized or not being invested, uh, within 180 days, either it has to be returned to the authorized dealer, or has to be reinvested within 180 days. Reinvested in any such investment. Now, up FDs, fixed deposit, bhi nahi aap kara sakte because that is not an investment included under the LRS scheme. Now, this has become a concern for a lot of investors. A lot of affluent Indians, they had their money parked abroad. Now, they are in a catch-22 situation. Now, this difficult situation we call catch-22 situation, which is a situation in which you have no solution in where it is an unsolvable situation or there is no solution to a particular situation or any particular rule. Now, so now they are in a difficult situation, in a catch-22 situation because they had a lot of money which was parked abroad and it was not being used or utilized. Now, these rich residents who spread their money across currencies and markets, maybe also in offshore accounts, are now, are now unsure how to diversify their savings or how to utilize them or reinvest them anywhere. Okay, that brings us to the end of the session. We have three very good topics. This is our app. If you haven't yet downloaded, please download our app. You'll get a lot of information about various other exams as well through this. Okay, let's look at questions. Which of the following will appropriately fill the blank? The internal working group of RBI under the chairmanship of Dash had submitted the final report on implementation of counter-cyclical capital buffer in July 2014. Here the answer is B. Mahapatra. Which of the following statements are correct about counter-cyclical capital buffer framework in India? The counter-cyclical capital buffer decision would normally be pre-announced with a lead time of four quarters. This is correct. Normally, ki baat ho rahi hai. normally this is the norm. Usually, counter-cyclical capital buffer is maintained at 2.5% of the RWA. Now, this is 0 to 2.5%. 0 to 2.5%. So, this is, a, this is an incorrect statement. Credit to GDP gap shall be the main indicator in the CCYB framework in India. This is also correct. It is the main indicator. We had to find out the correct statement. Okay. Recently, SEBI banned brokers practice of bank guarantee. From which date will this rule be applicable? From, from 1st May 2023. The new rule of remittance scheme restrains investors from keeping unused money beyond dash here you have to tell what number of days. So, the correct answer here is 180 days in offshore bank accounts. The correct answer here is 180 days B. Right. So, this was the last question for today. Aapka exam bohat paas hai. Please keep preparing for your exam. I wish you all the luck. Thank you.